Welcome to Elite Six Business Networking Think Tank, facilitated by your host, Danny DeHeck, the place where decision makers come together to share their experience, knowledge, and skills. Good morning, everybody. How is everyone today? Great, thank you. Awesome. Fabulous. <laughs> Welcome to the Danny and Helen Show. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we haven't got Facebook stream live, so we probably won't get a few people that forgot to uh, tune in, but we probably get a few collective souls along the way. That's okay. We had a brilliant meeting last week. I think we had, um, I didn't count everyone, but I probably did, about 10 or 12 people. And we didn't miss um, Stefano at all, did we, guys? Oh, of course we did. Oh, <laughs> yes, we did. We missed a smiling face, yeah. Yeah, oh, ask like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, somebody's trying to figure out how to get into the Zoom meeting. They think it's a good idea to ring me at the time. Hey, while I'm trying to get him online, um, could we uh, go around the room and introduce ourselves so we know who we are? Uh, I'm not going to uh, say who's next. You can pick who if you haven't speak. And put your hand up if you want to go first. Brilliant. Steph Arlo, you wiggled your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, so I'm Steph, and this is Jeline, yeah. outworking partner. Um, we're from the OddWave, and we help SMEs with the e-commerce and systems integrations, um, and just streamlining their processes and making things better for them. So we're from Auckland, the other side of the uh, world. Yeah. Mm. That's okay, we won't hold it against you. Okay. I hear they've got electricity <laughs> there now, though, so it's moving ahead. <laughs> Now, when, um, when just thinking, because this person's asked me for the Zoom link, how do I answer that without being sarcastic? Because I'm terrible, aren't I? No, just just answer them, B. Just right. be nice. I did be nice. I said, be I'm nice. Play nice. nicely. Pretend they're going to spend lots of money it's, with thank you. Thank God it's Friday, <laughs> Danny, so be nice. <laughs> <laughs> right. We should have Therapy Thursday, which we've got, and thank God it's Friday. Thank you. Yeah. Zoom meeting. We need That's a good name on it. Fun Friday. Yeah. Fiona, yeah. Jude, oh. got me crazy Stefano's now. put it up in chat, Link. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it's no good for that one who's in here, though, are they? Um, no, it's good. All right, so, um, yeah, so we are doing a podcast here. Our theme today is actually a, quite a goodie. It is recruiting clients. Obviously, I've just blown that. But <laughs> 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 um, yeah, you get that on the big jobs. Huh. Hey, somebody could have told me my green screen's not proper. I can fix that, you know, with a click of a button. What's wrong with it? Notice the edges at the top? Oh, that's, oh, okay. that's not good yeah, enough. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh we're the camera very close up clicked now. In now. Right. Can't see any difference. Screen. Can't see any difference with, the, have you got glasses? Yeah, you have. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that, that might be why. Did it pop up yet? It hasn't, is it? All right, guys. Uh, all right, so who, who did we get up to? Oh, so it's about me. I'm David Clarkson from Dynamic Communication. We build more confident, more competent, more credible communicators. We're in the, in the training business. We train people to be better communicators using public speaking as the medium by which we do that. And we operate out of Christchurch. Our clients are normally medium to large organizations and I train their staff to improve their communication skills. Excellent. This time straight in the deep end. Richard Andrews, what do you do? I spend my mornings trying to get out, work out how to get into Zoom, but once I master that, <clears throat> <laughs> well, you see, my password doesn't work. I don't know why. It used to work on your site, now it doesn't, and I haven't bothered to do the change. You have to reset it. Yeah. Yeah. Did that at the well, meeting yesterday that you were at, but you were out there. Yeah. I was probably in deep conversation. Oh, here's a lot of I do. Working out of them. Um, that's good. All right. So, what did you? Did we get to the point where we asked you what you did? Nah. Oh. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's from Australia. Got to make yeah, yeah. What can you expect? Yeah, you, you, you guys won't understand me. <laughs> yeah, I speak his language. <laughs> Waving my hand across my face. All right, Mark Scown, what do you do? Yeah, Mark Scown, uh, insurance broker. I specialise in uh, personal risk and small business. Uh, risk advice, but my particular speciality is um, projecting over the long term what future premiums are going to be, so uh, able to have those discussions with clients around not only fit for purpose now in terms of cover, but what will it look like in 10, 15 or 20 years time, um, and so I can restructure that to 
to avoid those huge and massive premium rises that uh, happen to people later in their lives. At your age, you mean? Well, you don't want to get to my stage, mate. I'm <laughs> paying what I was paying insurance, that's for sure. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Helen. Helen Motobi. I'm a photographer, a digital artist, and what else am I? Um, more Danny, of the I'm Danny's personal branding photographer. Yeah. <laughs> and before I put it on trade me, guys, we bought new cameras the other day, and the um, old ones are for sale. Uh, Sony's 6000, very good camera. But if you want that, let me know really quick before I put it on trade me for a dollar reserve. We're selling products on here now, honey. Oh, and yeah. it comes with a free pair of steak knives. <laughs> oh, we need it. <laughs> Show us the steak knives. Yeah, that's the one camera you get one free. Yeah, Wait, bit, there's yeah. more. Mm, that's cool. All right, um, who have we got now? We'll go for um, uh, who hasn't introduced themselves? Ray, <laughs> Ray, Raymond. I'm um, Sword Productions. I'm a film producer or content producer. Um, I specialize in live streaming. I'm sitting in the live streaming truck. If you were here last week, th this yeah. is not a green screen. This is actually the live streaming yeah, sure, truck. Um, also, I um, promote people's um, businesses on Facebook, YouTube, or uh, this is also Google Maps. Um, but anyone can do that. Um, you guys could put information on other people's oh, business and rate people, people if you want. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'm married with uh, a wife, of course. She's currently working as a nanny and two step kids, and they've gone back to their fathers today. The turnaround is on a Friday. Brilliant. Um, yeah. It looks like you're in the TARDIS Shop. anyway, so that's good. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> yeah, and um, Sean, have we got you there? Nice. Uh, he'll come back. He's He sits here watching. He just has a screen up. Mm -hmm. There he is. Yep. Sean from Quality Clean. Um, One-stop shop service for the um, property improvement. Uh, we're doing property related stuff, not really building sites, but um, um, make your house a bit more cleaner. Yep, and you kill bugs. We kill bugs, we do inspections, we do moisture inspections, we do uh, um, healthy home checks, and uh, we we control flood. If you got uh, flood inside of the house, well, unfortunately, um, yeah, people have their accident. I mean, yeah, uh, we're pretty busy uh, this week because we got uh, several jobs. And pe people got um, flooded from top to the bottom. Oh, it did rain real heavy uh, on Tuesday, I think, wasn't it? I walked the dog and there's a big puddle in the middle of the paddock and I thought, aha, something happened when I was sleeping. <laughs> Not really those kind of flood. But you like forgot to turn on the pipe of the bus tub or oh. broken okay. broken pipe. Yeah, oh, it's right. it's more bad. serious flood. Yeah. All right. We'll just keep moving around the room. Uh, yo, have I said that right? Yeah. Yo. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I just finished a meeting in town and uh, so I'm driving. So hopefully everyone can hear me clearly. Yep. So my name is Yao, and then I'm a financial GP who look after people's financial health. Uh, on the other hand, I'm also a pollinator who like to um, connect people with mutual interest. So this could be jobs, relationship, business, referrals, you name it. Um, so yeah, look forward to meet more people, and then yeah, I enjoyed it. So. And you're looking you know, very dapper today, I must say. Yeah, yeah I made a very <laughs> a lot of genius today, and then. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we'll have a, like a public breakfast, business breakfast this morning. So it was right. awesome. And yeah. Napier, isn't it? Nap uh, no, Napier. Uh, Hawks Bay. Are you Napier? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm in Napier. Yeah, cool. Right. Uh, Lachlan, you're next. Click that button. He's talking. Use your voice. We'll go back to Lachlan when the sound starts working. Can't hear that you. That moment when you realise you're talking to yourself, just <laughs> winner, isn't it? Chicken dinner. Uh, so who are we? Uh, uh, no. Is that 
Yeah, you got to be a Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I just put a new computer in. Uh, no, I'm a technical recruiter. I recruit for engineers, uh, architects, and general project managers in the construction industry. At the moment, I'm just about to hop on a plane to Wellington. My wife said, can you bring a couple of dresses that I'm making at the moment and some spices because I'm making a cake. So I'm like a cross-dressing uh, drug dealer if they stop me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's my other that's my other life. Yeah, and if you um, have too much to carry on, just wear the dresses. <laughs> yeah, that's a, what a what a what a crazy no idea! One <laughs> Brilliant <laughs> idea. Well, that's the that's the other side of me. You'll uh, yeah. probably never see. Yeah, uh, awesome stuff. Um, is that new computer got a new webcam on it? Has it? Um, well, I just had to plug the one in. Oh no! Um, yeah, it's got a, a new webcam. Clearer. A yep. lot clearer is it my is point. Clear. Yeah, yeah, you're looking like not just a fuzzy guy actually, and you're yeah. looking younger as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 it's actually just a fast computer it's one of these little tiny yeah. think centers i couldn't believe i've got this tower box which is about this by this and this new one is about the size of like an almost lift it's like that by that it's amazing yeah, yeah well no. to apple stuff mate <laughs> yeah. um so if we um no, matt, we matt, matt, matt yeah matt sit up matt Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Just fall asleep here. Um, <laughs> pull the camera down. <laughs> yeah, like, not one tends to do that, Matt. Yeah. I know exactly. Yeah, I didn't want to say. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it looks yeah. like a hermit. Now. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. right, people, uh, <laughs> stop it, Lachlan. <laughs> um, so yeah, Matt James, North Canary Business Services. Uh, Supporting small to medium sized enterprises with either startup issues uh, or just general support. So I'm a coach and business tormentor. Tormentor. <laughs> Make people accountable, don't you? Yeah. Oh, well, we'll get into it now. I think I've got everyone. Uh, anyone I missed? Does anyone know? Uh, I think we did everyone. Didn't we? No, so if I miss you, it uh, means I don't love you. Don't take it personally. All right, so we have actually got, I think I've shared the screen, I have, we've got a think tank meeting today and the topic is recruiting new clients. So how do we get new clients is the topic. And if you haven't been here before, which you guys have, we first of all talk about people's experiences trying to do it and that sort of merges into problems quite nicely. And hopefully we're gonna come up with some solutions and then we'll let you go um, when you tell me some takeaways. So uh, what are we doing? Well, put it on there so I can type. Oh, so Helen wants to take charge straight away. Yeah. wonder what she's going to type. So Matt already has put up referrals. Yeah. Word of mouth, I was going to say. Word yeah. of mouth, which is referrals really, isn't it? Yeah. Well, word of, word of mouth referrals. Then covered both yeah. bases. Is referrals double R? Uh, was that recruiting new clients? Or was that how to get... That it's, actually, it's actually triple R because you've got an R in the front as well. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Spelling does not interest me, guys. Right. Okay, so uh, people's experience in getting new clients, are we talking about how we actually, the tricks that we use to get them, is that what we're talking about? Yeah. And is it really a trick or is it being well, it's not a trick, yeah. No, it should be. No. You, can, you can target people you know. Um, How many friends? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like when these people get into the um, Arbon. And all of a sudden, all their friends are their customers. But not, we're not talking like that, though, are we? Suddenly, they lose all their friends, yes. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Solving people's problems. Yes. Um, good point. Yeah. Just talking about that, I had somebody that I was in an organisation with, um, not, a, not an, in a, in an employment situation, um, but I knew they were the size of company that I was interested in. And so I just approached that person because I knew them. And it was easy to do and just said to them, hey, you know, I can do this. This is what we offer. Can we be of assistance? And I gained a long term client as a result of it. So that would be really cold calling, wouldn't it, David? In a way? Well, no, I had a connection already. Oh, okay. so it's, yeah. You know, yeah. For me, for me, the, uh, in the insurance game, I'm, I'm picking up most clients through doing PowerPoint presentations to a variety of network groups out there so you've got a semi-captured audience who you um, have built a relationship with so that's probably generating about 60 percent of my annual business is there other networking groups hmm. oh. yeah but there's also other groups out there that you can go to um, mm -hmm. like the likes of um, rotary and roundtable 
and lots of organizations like U3A who are looking for speakers who have expertise to explain what goes on in their businesses and what have you. And that's a great place to go looking for clients and spread the word about what you've got to offer. But you've got to offer them something in terms of the, the quality that you're giving you in your PowerPoint presentations that you're talking about. One thing that really helped me along the way is always having a speech uh, ready to give. And I think you've told me that quite a few times, Dave. Yeah. And Michael Hempsey uh, was doing a seminar on Monday at 11.30 and the dyslexia organisation was actually going to come on to his seminar and they pulled out last minute for whatever reason. And then he said, Danny, I know it's last minute, but can you come on the show? Um, and it was great to be able to say yes and have one of my speeches ready to go, printed it out and gave a 85% polished speech. And then I got other people started contacting me on LinkedIn who are in the seminar um, and started asking me um, questions, which I invited on here today. And he said he'd definitely be here, but he said he might have a new job he's starting. So he obviously not. But that was, you know, a, another way of doing it too, is putting yourself out there and doing a bit of public speaking gigs. But I think you've got to make yourself available and people know that you're out for hire. So loss well, leaders to get people on board. So you're giving something away to get them on board, like um, and email lists are a good one. Get people to sign up for something and then email them and recruit them that way. Yeah, and I'll just yeah, put up and upsell them. Upsell, yeah. yes, yes. And I've just put up my promo pamphlet, and and I've found that is a great way. It's far better and more powerful for me than my business card which is just giving you basic contact de details, but just in one A4 um, folded um, brochure, it's actually giving them a, a little bit of an essence of what I specialize in. Yeah, I find business cards don't work. I, I don't even uh, hand out business cards anymore. Mine are quite old too, but I don't even use them and I'm not gonna get any more printed. I just find people get them, put them in their bag and never get them out again or throw them away, you know. Mm -hmm. I actually printed questions on the back of my business cards to gather, yeah. gather, gave them a purpose. So That's then, right. Yeah. It was a bit of a gimmick, really, more than anything. Hey, our sound must be shocking, is it? Because I haven't got my stereo on. Fine. Anyway. Oh, we can hear you, okay? Well, now you should hear me perfectly with my stereo sound. Oh, wow. Oh, that's oh, awesome. awesome. <laughs> that's what we're talking about. That's how we yeah. work. <laughs> Welcome to my crib. <laughs> Quiet, I can hear you breathing. <laughs> um, yeah. So what are we looking at? We're looking at people's experience with recruiting new clients. If you think back to the last client you got, how did you actually um, get them? Oh, Raymond, you'd be my last one. Let's go to Raymond. Um, uh, how did I, I don't find know if you? this answers the question, but I was thinking before someone mentioned um, you're talking about um, your testimony about something. Um, but uh, I was thinking of the elevation speech, like you got to pitch in 30 seconds or something and how long it takes the elevator to go up. Um, cause oh, yeah. sometimes you just say, hello, just and then the next question is, it's a, maybe a New Zealand cultural thing and all of the developing na nature is, what do you do? Mm. Uh, and that's what you, you go to question and you got to pitch it because people's attention spans are quite short anyway. Um, is it another matter if they listen or not? Because that goes into the psychology of it. <clears throat> You've got to have that hook as well. I reckon that's um, a really important thing. It's it's like having your media package or your media pack ready to go when somebody mm. says, you know, right through to your email signature, um, you know, to, to be able to describe who you are and what you do within, I call it 150 characters, actually. And if you have an elevator pitch, if you have an elevator pitch, you've got to practice it. Yeah, yes. Because you've yes. got it organized doesn't mean to say, I got embarrassed a wee while ago because I forgot mine because I hadn't used it for a wee while. So just a reminder, folks, if you've got an elevator pitch, make sure you're up to speed with it. When you on that, on that day, day, David, you, say, you polished yeah. it. David, on that day, your elevator stopped at the third floor. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, you got that wrong. It was the second floor. 
<laughs> Some elevators don't yeah. stop travelling either. They keep going right to the top and it's like... Yeah. Mm. I would say when it comes to elevators, it's the time you do could do with something like a business car because often people are not yeah. really that, that, that thinking about going to the seventh floor, David. And, yeah. um, and, and you've almost got to just drop something with them and then leave them a, a card. So I do use business cards in that situation. Yeah. 80% mm. yeah. of the time when I meet a new contact, I search for them on LinkedIn and connect with them. Mm. Me too. And, and then if you do that quickly, then the, your latest connections will actually be at the top. Yeah, Lachlan, yeah, you've yeah. got cute business cards. That makes I, I, I'm basically cute, frankly. Um, yeah, but that's the and, and also, but on the back, this is a core of recruitment. It's got the sort of symbols of three areas we work in, um, and it's got my numbers down there. But look, some people just keep them for a, a while. I mean, I, I have probably used a third of the ones I've yeah. uh, that they need. But in those situations, quite often you're at a place and you're not really to, you're at a social event or something. People say, "Oh, hang on, you know." They don't want to talk about recruitment right then and then you say, hey, give us, give us a call. And you swap cards, particularly in your back pocket, and you discover them three days later. Um, but then you make contact. But yeah. All right. Can we go on to problems, perhaps? Um, <laughs> actually, that's a really good one. Somebody who's just posted that, um, Stefan, actually. Um, Facebook business groups. Yeah, yeah, that's actually yeah. a really good one. Yeah. Yeah, there's oh, lots out there. And yeah. uh, what we do as well, if we specialize in specific technologies, we actually join those business groups. And then you can actually start learning about the kind of problems that people come across. And it will also help you condition your services in response to those problems. Yeah. yeah, that's a really yeah. good idea because you can chat yeah. in those sort of groups and then sort of, yeah. you know, befriend people as well and say, I can help you with this and that. And then they come to you, which is a yeah, yeah. really good idea. And that would go back to my every time I fill out a social media profile and they ask me for every, to fill out every box, I fill them out completely. I put the same branding throughout and then I start chatting or chit-chatting. So last night I'm chatting. I, I deleted all the people I follow on LinkedIn and I'm now only following 10 authors that I actually want to come on my podcast. And, um, and now I, I had one of them, I've had two of them, one of them say he's going to come on my podcast and one of them has been chit-chatting to me. And they're big overseas, one's in England and one's in America. And uh, so I'm focusing on using that conversational and I'm not going there straight away saying, do you want to come on my podcast? But I'm actually just starting to chit-chat and build a relationship up with them before I say, hey, have you thought about doing this or whatever it is? Can you move that up? Uh, Matt's put one in as well. Okay, good on you, Matt. Uh, one of the problems if you're cold calling is getting past the gatekeeper. Mm, that's a good one, yeah. yeah. What's some ways of doing that? Oh, well, one of the ways, I think I'm not sure whether I talked about it in the group yesterday, Danny, but was certainly a, is when you front up and you're cold calling, say, a, a company, um, it's a good idea to, to, to ask the receptionist who's the person in charge of whatever. Say it's who's the, who's the person in charge of purchasing or what have you. And, and the, invariably they will tell you and you just, what you can do is just leave their, your business card with them and say, say, would you mind giving this to them and make a note of their names and then leave it a day and give them a call and say, oh, I popped into your business yesterday and left my card with your receptionist. Can I talk to you about whatever it is that you're in the business of promoting? I used to do that and I used to carry around a whole lot of $5 notes and slip them a wee fiver and give them a wee <laughs> wink. <laughs> it's called off. graft, Danny. Oh, is that all right? Is it bribery? Yeah. We were listening to Grant Cardone's um, e-book and he was saying with that sort of thing, he getting past the gatekeeper and he said he, he flew somewhere and went into some office and pretty much said, I'm not leaving till I speak to the head honcho. And he finally got to speak to them, but he was pretty adamant. And I guess if you're quite bolshy, you can do that. But yeah, it's, it's sometimes quite hard to get to the person you want to get to. Mm. It's, it's a very uh, common recruitment, of course. Mm -hmm. I, spent seven, I spent seven grand with a local... Uh, Telemarketer, expert, you know, expert, little small business to uh, cold call into because I wanted new leads in uh, Australian schools. Um, we got one lead. Wow. Seven wow. Grand. From seven grand. Wow. Yeah. And I, I'm a telemarketer, mate. 
Yeah. If you only want one lead, I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now, 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 Danny, about that idea with your fibres, I've got some little envelopes here which are just fibre size. I'll self-address them and send them to you. <laughs> <laughs> when, when we started Elite Six in Dunedin, we hired a telemarketer, and that was actually quite good because it was the right area. And then I went down there before um, I started the meeting, thought I'd knock on a few doors for the morning, and I bumped into three or four companies that had received a phone call from our telemarketer. But um, I think, you know, it was just a, obviously somebody ringing around businesses for business networking, but I think that would have to be finding the right type of client, I suppose. Yeah, it, it, it does depend on your industry. I, I just happened, to, I happened to have lucked out on, on the teaching game, which is impossible because it, it, is, it is, I'm not just making excuses, but um, getting past the gatekeeper is like, I, this is the same person that you use, Danny. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, she, she couldn't believe it. She's never struck anything like it. But then you get your name, but you can't, you can't call in because teachers are the busiest animals on the planet. So they're never sit, you're almost never sitting down. You can't actually, oh, can I speak to John Smith? He's not at his desk. Mm. Or, or you get into the mass staff room and no one picks up the phone. I never used to pick up the phone because it's a, mm. it's a distraction from what I needed to do. It's just one of those industries. So I, I've sort of dropped that. My, um, my aim now is all, it's all digital. It's, you know, um, lead magnets and mm. building up, building up an email list and yeah. quality email streams that's that's really for me that's that's the way to go so what well, about teacher it's... conferences sorry what about doing demos at teacher conferences well yeah well i've i've done that as well but when i priced it like for example you know i did the melbourne the the, the victorian mass association is huge right so but when i priced it um so i got what probably 60 leads of which 20 i mean and they're leads, you might talk to them for 30 seconds, but then you email them and go, why are you emailing me? Uh, like, who are you? Because they, they don't remember you. You're one of many people yeah. they've spoken to. Mm -hmm. And when I priced it, I thought, you know, like the whole gig, I mean, admittedly, it's a bit more expensive because I'm flying from New Zealand. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, minimum, even if I was in Australia, it's like two, a $2,000 investment at least. And that's not including the materials and whatever. Yeah. But for $2,000 with a decent lead magnet and on Facebook, I can get, I can get leads like a much higher number of leads who are then in, in the um, email or stream and, and et cetera, et cetera. So bang for buck in, in my industry, it's a lot cheaper to, to do it remotely than, than, you know. So the problem could seriously be not knowing where to spend your advertising dollar. Mm. Couldn't it really? Yeah, because well, you spend that can be a costly exercise. <laughs> you learn that by spending it in areas that you that are a waste of time, and then you yeah. narrow down to um, to you know finding out what's important. But the th I guess that the biggest the biggest uh, lesson I've got in the last twelve months is that the email list is the mo is your is your strongest asset. Yep. That mm. is that is actually the bee's knees, and for me. I, you know, I, oh, I sort of knew that, but it's hard as a sole operator to know what, what software do you use? You know, I use MailChimp for a while. That's crap. And, and, and because I dived into that other sort of digital marketing world and saw what people were doing, it's like, oh, okay, this is, this is how it works. And so I've, I've now adopted those principles, but that's, and now it makes sense. So you can have different email streams, but you have to know how to use it. Um, There's one, Richard, called Infusionsoft, which a lot of people use, but it's pretty expensive. Mine's, uh, mine costs me about, I don't know, I think it's about 40 bucks a month or something. Yeah, um, I think this is convert way Kit's quite good, isn't it? Yeah. Hey? Convert Kit's meant to be pretty good. Yeah, well, there's lots of people good. saying lots of things. I, I'm, yeah. I, to me, with any of these tools, that, yeah. and because I'm in the game of marketing this sort of stuff uh, yeah. now, and, and the thing that blows my mind is that no one talks about what I think is the most important thing. I'm, I'm, obviously, the tool's got to work, but I mean, surely they all work. Yeah. But the most important thing to me is what's the customer support like? Now, I, I'm with Aweber, and they've got 24-7 chat, right. su chat support, which is a game changer. And other, other, you know, it's the same with website design or, or whatever, you know, if, if you send a support ticket, because you, you you're on a roll, you're doing something, you hit, a, you hit a brick wall, so you send a support. If you don't get a reply for 60 hours, mm. like your productivity yeah. is through the floor. Yeah. 
Whereas if you can just jump on and you chat to someone within two minutes and then you get a really detailed answer, like it's a game changer, but no one talks that about that as a sales, a sales point. So in, in my view, with all those really important tools the, that you, you need to get on top of. So uh, that that's really important, but I've, I've gone really deep with Aweber. So I know how to tag. And so, you know, you have one campaign for some lead magnet that you've put out there and that, campaign talks about that tutorial or whatever it is that you've, you've put out there. And then that funnels into the main campaign, which mine goes for 18 months. So it's yeah. like once every 10 days. And then I can also send live campaigns yeah. and how, how you can auto. Yeah, it's just, it's quite amazing to see how it all works. Um, but yeah, so I, I, that's sort of my, that's my mantra now. So obviously um, recruiting your clients, one way of doing it, obviously having a good mailing list that, accomplishes what you want to and you can track it and uh, obviously is a big important thing yeah. uh, anyone else got any other sort of marketing stuff that they well, use well, well I think in terms of um, the work you're doing like uh, Richard you know you, you'll have people have a certain interest but quite often recruitment you know a bit of a challenge because uh, to be fair in recruitment quite often the we have two types of clients we have clients who give us look, look come to us and say I need an architect that tends not to happen. What happens is they might be advertising for an architect and they're getting nowhere. So you have to contact them. But if you advertise recruitment services, they think, well, we're already doing it. You know, um, so you've got to approach them. So the phone is magic for recruiters. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the rest of stuff works in tandem. The phone plus is the hybrid thing works the best. And also for candidates, the best candidates who tend to be gainfully employed. And, uh, and those who are sort of uh, hang around on street corners, they've got the time to, to sit and search. So you've got to be proactive. So the phone is great, but um, certainly, uh, you know, it, it's, it's where the magic tends to happen, but we use that in the other, in the other areas. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't suggesting what I'm saying is yeah. for everyone, but certainly for, and I guess that's, you know, there's, there's businesses that are pretty much fully online and then there's yeah. those that are much more um, yeah, yeah. You know, in the right. real yeah. world. Yeah. Um, so, um, and I guess it's a comparison. There's a lot of people who are marketing on Facebook and with their Facebook profiles or pages or groups or whatever, mm. but don't really have the email list sorted. And it's yeah, like, yeah. well, yeah. that's ridiculous, you know, because yeah. once you've, because the email list is the only thing you actually own. I mean, Facebook just have to change the algorithms or platform the yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, but that it's taken me a long time to realize that message. Um, yeah. Like, you know, for, for shops, for example, or, or even online shops or, or, or whatever, you know, if, you, if you're buying a decent product, yeah. to have a little email stream that goes, you know, five emails that support yeah. that product, yeah. um, that makes a huge difference. So, because you're looking for, it's not, you're not trying to get a sale, you're trying to get a repeat customer. Yeah. So to have an email stream that supports what you're doing. Uh, for, for example, like I, I, I run, my main business is um, running courses, online courses for teachers. Right. And, and I, I, a couple of my courses are quite popular if I sell them over the yeah. phone yeah. Um, to, as, t as run by teams. So like a whole department will do a course together. And then yeah. I, the, usually the head of the department is the team leader and I'll support that team leader. And I also reply to everyone's posts and all that. But my problem is I've never been able to keep in touch with all those team leaders, right? So, because especially if, if they drop off the wheel and aren't posting, Right. And it's like, you know, it's a has. I like it. I just don't want to have to go through my spreadsheet and work out who they are and do all this sort of bullshit. Mm. So now I've got a tag now. So I just tag them as a team leader and that they're in an automatic email stream, which goes for 12 months. I mean, they only get one email every one month or two months it, it, right. it, towards the end, but it's a reminder, Hey, Richard here, you know, like, how's it going? Uh, you know, and so that's an easy way for them just to reply. Yeah. So okay. rather than me having to chase them, yeah. Now it's like bang, that's automated. That's yeah, not a, a marketing thing, but I'm just saying it's the the uh, the yeah. uses of, of email like that. Um, Magic. I think if we could have a discussion all about mailing on a whole think tank would be good. But today's yeah. topic is actually recruiting yeah. new clients, and obviously yeah, sure. email systems yeah. is one thing. But I think yeah. if um, we look for other things, so I mean, obviously it's a strong part of your business is having an email list. I think the strongest part for any business is having a database that is nimble enough to upload and to all those systems yeah. we use uh remaze to handle a lot of our customer inquiries but it's a real pleasure when you can actually integrate that really quick with your existing website content and pull out all your contacts without having to load them one at a time and do the the, the things 
Uh, what about, uh, so that's recruiting new clients. I mean, obviously if you're doing a mailing list, um, let's just stay on that topic for a little bit more, but where do you get your mailing list from? How do you build that list? You do things like lead magnets where you uh -huh. offer them something to get their email address. So a lot of places nowadays will say, we'll give you a free tip sheet for how to take 30 photos in 30 days and people go oh cool and so you send it off and by sending it off you get their email address and that goes into your email list mm -hmm. so it's giving away some sort of freebie what software are you using to drive all that and manage it well, facebook has plugins and there's there's numerous things where you can create well be like uh what those what, what do you call them richard well, SaaS funnels, I've, I've got onto this software. Yeah. And, and again, like you might've heard of click funnels. Don't ever yeah. go to, yeah. right? Um, it's the big talk. It's just, a, it's like Nike. They, they spent, it's just a marketing exercise, but the this, this software is crap. But I found software that's really damn good. And hmm. so you can have a free lead, like a could be a survey or a case study or a, a little module or a video or whatever. But you can have that as the lead magnet. <clears throat> so they, you see that on Facebook or on wherever on the web, you know, if you're some sort of advertising and they click the link and then they've got to hand over their na first name and email address to access it. But then there's upsells. Oh, okay. Well, for five bucks, you can have this. And for 25 bucks, you can have this. And, and now they're in the email stream. So, so you take them through a funnel and that's how it works. Yeah. yeah. But the thing I like about this funnel, it, it's easy to build this stuff inside the funnel. So it's like a website, but it's it's just every, on every page, it's either yes, I do or no, I don't. There's no other links cl links to click on. So it's very simple. That's the idea of a SaaS funnel. It's just mm. very linear. I think and, last week we was having a similar sort of discussion. It was actually David, he came up with um, old fashioned um, touch <coughs> ways of building clients. And I remember when I was building up Elite Sixes, I was involved in so many social groups I'd be out mountain biking, uh, hiking, walking, anything to do. Is there any, I think that's a great way of building those relationships up and actually going there. I literally would never talk business and I'd go there for six or eight months without any, um, you know, view of trying to generate leads. But I often found I got business from their friends. They would refer you because they, you know, they eventually if you don't tell somebody what you do for a living, they're busting to know. And I always try not to say because I think if they're generally interested, they pry it out of you some way or form or ask a friend. And then when a friend's telling you what Danny does will work, it's so much more better as a referral, if that makes sense. Yeah. There must be a name for that, Danny. Let's try it. Friends. <laughs> That's relationship marketing is what it is. It's no, no, the, the, uh, the uh, I won't tell you what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't it more appealing? Because everyone, when you meet somebody, the first five or 10 seconds, they go, what do you do? And I hate answering mm. that question. Yeah, yeah. Because even I don't know how to label what I do sometimes. Yeah. But sort of looking at even in the formal thing, you're talking about solutions here. Um, certainly, taking a long-term view is 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 pretty wise. You know, we talk about the elevator pitch, but uh, you know that often just starts the process. I know, as a recruiter, uh, it's often on the sixth or seventh time we deal with the client, interact with the client, they actually would consider giving us work. And knowing that is so powerful. Because it's very disappointing when you start out recruitment, you, you pick up the phone and talk to them. They don't want to talk to you. Uh, and, you know, story end off. Um, whereas old dogs like me, just you get patience. And, you, and your first three, three or four phone calls are almost throwaway calls. Yeah, because you've got to build that relationship first. Of course you do. You? Yeah. I, I rig up and ask clients questions. So I recruit for architecture um, quite often. And I'll, uh, if I'm dealing with some roles in Auckland, I'll ring up someone and say, look, I'm not, can I just put my recruitment hat off for the moment? I like, can just tell me what's happening in the industry in Auckland at the moment. You know? And you ask them a few good <laughs> questions. I see the projects going here. What's happening? How's it been for you? And you know, you'll have a chat and then you'll do the same thing in three to six months time. And you generally want to know, is that, you know, I'm not just making up some story. I want to know that. And that's useful for my other stuff. But you call them the third time and you're nothing like an old friend. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I used to go and find a common interest with somebody. And that was my goal. You know, that was outside of the work sort yeah. of thing. You know, and then we talk about that. Yeah. It's funny, though. You might build up a friendship with someone and it might be ages down the track before they go and you might say what you do and they go oh really i didn't realize you did that so yeah. you know sometimes it can take a while mm. 
Well, I've, I've certainly found that, that sometimes the, the slow burners in, end up generating the strongest clients yeah. because yeah. they've had time, A, to get to know you and, and respect you. And it's also about timing for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if you pitch too early, then if it's not the right time for them, you may have lost them forever. Yeah. yeah. Is that a really good point? The timing's never right. And, you know, and that's really important to acknowledge that, you know, when they need that, you're going to be the first thing on their mind if you keep dripping away your social media or they keep seeing you around. I mean, you start to be really annoying like a, a fly. That's what I do. Zzz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, that's, and that's another reason for an email list that, you know, with yep. a, an email stream that goes on, you can just drip feed and... Yep. You've often got to be careful, though, with email lists because you can almost spam people too much. Disagree. No, you can't. Oh, no, well, I get emails yeah. from people like yeah. one a day or two or three a day and it's just too much. So I, I signed up something to something a while ago and this guy was highly recommended by this other bloke I was following. I got seven emails in one day. It's just, yeah, it's you know, just too much. Like, yeah. This is what not to do in marketing. It's just yeah. insane. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you, the emails have to be good quality. That's the they thing. do, yeah. And most, most yeah. emails aren't. That, that yeah. is a, what you just said was really good. As you, uh, good quality content. Yeah. Be, yeah. Like, uh, what's a good balance? Like when you try and like email people, like is it once a week, once a month? You want them to read it, don't you? So you do. Yeah. Yeah. Un- unless you've actually said, like for example, you might be saying five ways of whatever, and you might send them in that batch one a day. Yeah. Then when they've signed up for it, they're expecting it. But yeah. most things, yeah, people, good. if you're getting yeah. more than once a week, it's over the top. Yeah, I think Stefano, mm. it's got to be regular, but yeah, not not too many. Once, twice a week, something like that. Yeah. I, yeah. I went crazy on LinkedIn, and I basically every time somebody was celebrating their year anniversary or it was their birthday, I'd come up with four conversations I would have with them. If I got to point A, I'd post question two, and it was quite good, you know. So. And eventually I did get conversations going, but I was really surprised how many people wouldn't respond to me unless I said something really personal to them. So you'd scout through their LinkedIn profile, find something really interesting that they've just commented on and then going and say, that, oh, I was just reading your comment on such and such article. I have to agree that's really well said or something like that. And then that would spark up a conversation, but all the other tricks and techniques I did wouldn't really. But yeah. Yeah. And talking around content, Danny, I think one of the things as business people we've got to do is be on our metal when we're having conversations with people who could be clients or even people from other industries. So that if we stay alert and stay with the conversations, we will very often pick up the sorts of leads that can lead us after a little bit more work to to you know, work down the track. And I think oftentimes we're inclined to dis- dismiss people because we think, oh, there's not, not likely to be any business there. Mm. But if we stay with it and just mm. listen to what they've got to say, you just never know your luck. Mm. And I reckon being genuine, obviously, is the biggest thing. Yeah, yeah you absolutely. Know, you know, but I definitely agree with you never know who you're talking to. Mm. Uh, you know, like we had a uh, years ago, but I remember getting a job for uh, a friend of mine who was a window cleaner, and he finished up getting us the Todd family's house to paint because he used to clean their windows, and he used us because he said, "I know you guys are private, and you you won't tell people who you're working for." This was years ago, but that led to doing six houses for the richest family in New Zealand, and they'd use us to do everything, and that come from a window cleaner. <laughs> So here, here am I, who would I have to assume the window cleaner wouldn't know anyone? You know, but that's, that's the other one too, um, I believe, is be around people who are proactive. Uh, with the Link 6, we used to have a lot of uh, real estate agents, but real estate agents talk to a lot of people each day. So do mortgage brokers, um, insurance people. They, they talk to people, they're around about town. So they're good people to hang around with, you know. So, you know, I mean, Raymond and his truck there, I'm sorry, mate. You've got no friends. <laughs> uh, but, you know, never know who Raymond might need. He might be doing, um, you know, I want to be in touch with Billy Connolly. Is he still alive? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> what about um, asking for um, new business? Uh, have you ever met somebody before and you ask them how they're going and they're like, oh, I'm flat tech? Do you feel like referring them? 
But if they say I'm currently looking for new opportunities at the moment, then you might stick your neck out for them and, and think, actually, I know somebody. So rather than closing the door by saying you're, you're, you're too busy, who wants to refer somebody who's too busy? That's true, yeah. I think there's two sides to it. You know, they, they say, if you want something done, give it to a busy man. Yeah. Yeah. So, but those people who talk are that busy. People are obviously busy getting stuff done. That's slightly different. But if people just talk all the time about being busy, I'm not so sure. We need to come up with something different. When you go to the supermarket, how's your day? Oh, busy. busy or, no. or their first thing is, have you been busy? And then other people ask you about your work. Oh, yeah, I've been busy. It needs to be yeah, something Just better. a default. <laughs> why do we have to be busy? Yeah, exactly. Why do we have to come yeah. across that we're busy all the time? Come on, why do we practice that? What's a good answer with some of how's your day going? What do you guys say? I usually say you, you'll go to the same training school then because every, every shop you go, you get the same question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> busy. We need to come up with something, yeah, original because, uh, yeah, it's just what everybody says. And busy, the reason I think why people say busy is because they want to look like they've got loads of work and they're A successful. Mm. If, if you said, oh, yeah. I've got loads of work, they'd be like, oh. Maybe we said we're bored out of our brains at the moment. <laughs> I was I've hoping got, to have a conversation with you to make my yeah. day a rainbow. I've got no I'm pushing words. the envelope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm currently looking for new friends. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think that's appropriate. <laughs> yeah. Few in the chat. Let's have a look at the chat. Uh, oh, we're getting told what to do now. Yeah. She's in charge. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, now, um, what, that comment there, where was that going to go? Um... If you can try to put it in brackets where you want your comment to go, um, I like the way that um, Mark does it. He puts a, a bracket S, so that means solutions for Danny. Mark and Matt, well done. Yeah. <laughs> Gold star. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you've got using relationships with others for cross-promotion businesses. That's a good one. I totally believe in that, yeah. Yeah. I have to make a new box now. Ooh. All right, so here we go for time. We've been not go over time today. Um, it's really nice to see everyone here. I really appreciate your time that you spend here. So it makes a huge difference for us. Uh, we've got about seven minutes left. So we could probably start discussing some takeaways and thinking about, um, oh, sorry, Matt. He's gone. Where did he go? He fell uh, off. He's gone. Oh, he's got other friends. We'll talk about him now. Um, so what did we get from the meeting? So, anything of interest there today? Work on those business relationships. Yeah. Dave, I think I think you mentioned this, but have you got a no just Danny block your ears, but you were you were mentioning some um, other networks like to have speakers or like yep. you know, do you have a couple in <clears throat> that you'd recommend in that in that front? Like Well, you know, some? for me, um, what I use I have used on a number of occasions have been People who are looking for, as I said earlier, are looking for speakers all the time. People like Rotary, Roundtable. If you've got something to push around your, around education, which you think really needs to be said and people need to hear, then do something on that and then go out and give it a folk. Mm -hmm. And you'll, you'll, it'll, it will it will very often hit a button and it'll be somebody who's been at the meeting who goes back and talks to their partner or talks at a, at a, at a social gathering or around a dinner table and somebody says, now I need somebody like that or that's a great idea, we should be looking at yeah. that. That's what I mean. Yeah. Well, that, um, funny enough, Michael Hempsey, uh, obviously the dyslexic organisation pulled out and he literally was on social media and saw my video of me talking about dyslexia. And he said, I don't know why I didn't think of you first, he said. And then that's why I got the gig. Mm, mm. You know, and so, I mean, I've, I've put a wee promo video together. It's one minute, oh, I think it's three minutes, 49, well, 39. <laughs> and um, I've got it there and people can see how I talk. And I've, I've put myself out there as a speaker about understanding dyslexia. And the, just to go, to go back to what you were saying before, if you look at groups around the city, you've got people like you 3 a and those other groups that I've that I've talked about, they've got they've got numerous clubs or groups around the city, and you can maybe put yourself in front of a couple of hundred people under each sort of heading without any bother at all. Now that's the best sort of exposure you're going to get. Mm. 
we learned a lot at the National Speakers Group as well, just on how to groom yourself as a, a speaker. And that really resonated well with me. Toastmasters sort of keep me in the game a lot as well. But there's, there's another uh, great group to be part of. At one point, I was part of three different Toastmasters group, a morning lunch and an evening one. And it was actually good because it kept me in the game of being a public speaker. And just like David said earlier on, that he got rusty with his elevator pitch because he hadn't used it for a few months. Um, and then even doing the speech on Monday, it was quite, you know, I, I've done a bit more speaking lately, but you get rusty real quick. So, uh, and I used to be a member of Rotary for about five years, and that was really just giving back to the community. Um, but I did get people, even though the average age of the person in my Rotary Club was 71, they seemed to refer their family to me when they needed their computers fixed or the computer website stuff. And that's where the, the business come from. That's right. You know. that's, that's precisely my point, Danny. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, we've got quite a few takeaways here. We've got some really good content. Awesome. We need a good topic for next week. Something that we can get our teeth into. Recruiting new clients. Um, How about networking? Well, I think we've done that one not too far away. Networking. Different ways of meeting people. Could be another relationship yeah, yeah, yeah. building. What about maintaining our enthusiasm for our business? Um, yeah. I think we have that, yeah. I think yeah, we did, think actually. Yeah. Right. What, yeah. what about something more specific, like, like business graphics or something you know um you know getting your image across to people Ooh, video like and, branding but the branding imaging yeah. you know so digging down a little bit because so I, I find sometimes these things can be so general that, that there's so many things to discuss mm -hmm. um, what about, um the, i mean that's great i'm thinking also that might be a good one is actually doing the elevator pitch uh in a way isn't it we had um something on that face-to-face -face meeting a wee while ago, but, you know, being able to actually say who you are and what you do without it sounding like you're, you're doing a plug. I'd love to work on an elevator pitch, yeah. Yeah. What's, what's an elevator pitch again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a shocker. I, David, I say your one. I'm David, Dynamic Communications. We build more confident, more... Competent. Confident, more credible communicators. So if you've ever found yourself in a situation where you've had to give a speech and you didn't know where to start, give us a call. If you've given a speech at any stage and you've sat down afterwards and you said to yourself, that sucked, <laughs> then you need to give us a call. <laughs> if you've ever been in a meeting yeah. and you sat there like a stunned mullet, knowing you could have or more you should have had plenty to say and you didn't, then you need to give us a call. David See, Clark's Dynamic yeah. Communication, we're your one-stop shop. Is that your pitch or your business card? <laughs> it's got to be more than a business card, matey. My, yeah. my view on uh, elevator pitches in, in this forum, I don't think it would, ha it would go the distance over that time to break it down into that level I think it's important to be able to to um, to be able to state what you do in a, in a extended paragraph but I, I don't think as a topic it will actually um, travel well in actual fact Mark I disagree um, and the reason I say that is because elevator pitches can vary it can vary in their length and I take your point that maybe all you've got is two or three sentences, what, with, which is what you got with what Danny gave us right at the start of my start of my elevator pitch. If I've got more time, then I go forward. So I can do it literally for half a second. I can do it for up to a couple of minutes. And if, if I've got the time and can go fully in to explain what we do, I can do it for five minutes. I believe in actual fact, you've got to have the option to be able to do each of those so that you can seize the opportunity that's available. I always struggle. I'd love to get a really good pitch because I do lots of things and exactly what I never know say. which one to put at the forefront. I mean, photography is at the forefront, but I do other stuff as well. And it's, you know, do I just talk about the photography? Do I add all the other things? And, you what, know, what? I don't know how to word it. Never Why don't we try and all? I mean, I, I listened to David, and I think that was uh, frankly a pretty good one. As I say, it's structured because you hop in a lift with elevator with David, and he says, "How many floors are you going?" 
<laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, and I was saying, oh, sorry. I, sorry, I just forgot my fags. <laughs> but, 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 but truth be told, why don't we all then come up with one or two elevator pitches for our own business to test? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it just it doesn't get you the business, but it does start the process. Yeah. yeah. And I think of the context of that. I mean, I like David's one because honestly, a lot of people who do coaching, you say, yeah. What do you do? And they say, Oh, well, I just do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, and that just falls flat. Yeah, I'd like input with mine. I would, I would like some help because I just, yeah, I struggle. Hey, why don't we then? Why don't we do one for ourselves and then one for someone else in the group? Yeah, hmm. that's a good. Yeah, yeah. So we're not on back. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like the Dale Carnetti approach in some ways too, because a lot of people uh, that people like talking about themselves. So if you master the art of asking questions. Um, and you go up to somebody and go, you know, or how long, for example, David, how long have you been a public speaker trainer? There's a better question than saying what you do. Mm. And, and then you say, well, how did you get into that? Uh, then David's go, oh, I'll get to tell my story. And then you go yeah. and, uh, and going forward, where do you think it's going to take you? Mm. You know, and those questions make people feel even better about talking. And, they, oh, this, and then they walk away from the conversation and say, oh, I had a fantastic conversation with Danny. Yeah. <laughs> and they just yeah, he's a great himself. guy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, so quickly, who wants to do an elevator pitch try for Helen? Yeah, cool. sure. <laughs> Have a look at my website if you start. Yeah. Who, what, yeah. Um, uh, who, um, Good point, actually. What you could do, because everyone in here except for um, yeah. uh, Yol, um, has a profile on the Elite Six website. Yeah. So that means that you can go on to um, there and look at the profile for David or Richard and see what they've got on there about themselves. And then see if that truly represents who you think they are. So I, yeah, my yeah, my elevator good. pitch might be based on that profile. I, I'll, I'll be 12 months away before I can have the profile that I want because I'm developing these other assets. But anyway, yeah. that's all. But that I, sounds I, like me, yeah. Because yeah. I think, and maybe it's my past industry as a as a principal, is that, yeah, yeah, you can assign people and say, you know, you come back to us and and you do so and so and do. So. I think the the best bet for people to learn about others in the group is you all go around and do your homework about everybody, and then part of that elevator pitch, as it would be in real life, is suddenly you put on the spot and you know someone within the group that you can talk about. All right. Yeah. Well, I've got a challenge. Who's going to be there? I'm going to make a challenge for you. Uh, well, today we've got to, even if people aren't here today, so if you go to um, to heck.com and you look at the, because I'll make this into a blog podcast and, uh, and then you'll be able to see everyone who spoke today. And I'll try my best to link it through to their profile. And that means that you can see everyone that's here today. And then maybe we could give a summary, even if we use their profile information and who we think they are, our own point of view, we could do a summary of everyone and actually what they do. Would yeah. that, that sound like a challenge? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Only, and unless you're distracted later today, because I just see in the link that the referendum results are out at two o'clock, so you might be smoking weed for the rest of the afternoon. Killing ourselves. Yeah. Can we, um, out of our interest, who's going to start smoking dope? I can't, Danny. I can't start because I used to do it twenty years ago. So it starts. Yeah. I've never tried it. I've never done any drugs. I've, I have actually smoked Danny, a packet of smoke one one night. No. Smoke a whole packet of smoke. Don't do it. It's not for you. That's yeah, right. Yeah. All right. Hey, um, I'll stop right, this um this podcast anyway. And thank you for being here today. If you're wondering who these people are, go to dehick.com or danny.co.nz. Check out their profiles and feel free to join us.